Hi, I'm Tim. Welcome to our channel and thanks for logging on. Today we're discussing the 2013 model year limited edition of 669 piece Omega Seamaster Bullhead Chronograph. You can see this 1969 vintage Seamaster Chronograph re-edition on our website. Subscribe to our YouTube channel if you enjoy these videos. And please click on the card in the upper right hand corner of the screen at any time during this video to see this tribute to the Omega Seamaster Bullhead reference 146 and own it. Naturally, our listing includes additional pricing details, full accessories included with the purchase, and additional high-resolution images of this extraordinary bullhead chronograph tribute. Now, I normally don't have a lot of patience for tribute-style watches. I prefer to advance the state-of-the-art as well as the content of the culture, but some watches were good enough that they deserve to come back as something better. And in 2013, Omega showed it does indeed have a soul by bringing back one of its most obscure and awkward past references, and I adore Omega for that. This is the Bullhead, a watch designed as a sports chronograph with a little bit of a water-resistant bent and an awkward layout of chronograph pushers such that it almost makes more sense as a watch held in the hand than a chronograph on the wrist. But again, flaws make for character, and this watch is beautifully flawed. So the bare dimensions of the stainless steel case are a little hard to explain. Let's start with the easy one. At the top of the case, where it is broadest, that is roughly the left side of your screen, the watch can be measured 43 millimeters across. Now in terms of thickness, this is where things get a little bit complex because if you look at the case back profile of the watch, you realize that it is not of a constant thickness. So if you measure it at the thick end, it measures at its extreme, 17.3 millimeters. But if you measure it towards the middle, which represents the majority of the case, it's actually 15 millimeters thick. So you choose which number you're gonna believe. Both are true. The watch is actually 43.3 millimeters from, I guess, case flank to case flank because it doesn't have lugs. Let me show you this watch on my 16 centimeter circumference wrist. That's how broad it is across the wrist. It's so far inboard of both sides of my wrist that I believe you could wear this watch securely on a wrist as small as 13 to 13 and a half millimeters in circumference. Would it look big and blocky? Yes, but at under 44 millimeters lug to lug, it will fit almost any forearm. I'll also mention that the case back has a distinct curvature to it, so it actually settles down to the wrist and almost aggresses against the wrist surface, planting itself even without being buckled down tightly. So ergonomically, it's shockingly good. Now, even more shocking, because the watch has no lugs, the strap is under slung in the extreme, meaning that the pivot point, the pivot points of the spring bars are actually inboard of the end of the case, meaning you can literally pull the strap straight down around the tiniest wrist conceivable and it would still be a secure fit. That said, the watch does have a satisfying heft about it. It is a massive block of steel, and it does feature a solid steel case back. The strap is a handsome and evocative, vintage-inspired, brown, slightly distressed calfskin with a contrasting stitch. You can see it features folded edges. It features more calfskin on the underside with a more conventional grain and a beige coloration. And then a full deployment clasp, satin and polish for contrast, twin triggers so it can't accidentally pop open. The triggers, unlike a clamshell or a friction fit, must both be depressed and positively disengaged to open the clasp. And you can see on the inside it features a minderless system so extra strap length tucks underneath the body of the clasp. There's no need for minder loops on the strap. And if you wonder what I mean by minder loops, these are minder loops. They're clutter. They age faster than the strap, and they're often the cause for strap replacement, even if the leather is still in good serviceable form. This eliminates those. Moreover, the case itself is remarkably compact. It has a small physical footprint. As you can see from directly overhead, it's big and blocky, and it certainly dominates the part of the wrist it covers, but it does not cover much of the wrist objectively. Now, the case finish is surprisingly nuanced. It certainly snuck up on me. There has been a reprofiled design about the chronograph pushers. They are not matched to the original bullhead. Some elements were changed to give this watch a little bit of standalone character in its own respect. In its own era, it has to have a little bit of 
a sense of identity that's moored to the present and not basking exclusively in reflected glory, and Omega achieved that. This watch is very much its own thing. It is not dependent on the original for its appeal. You can see that the flanks are satin finished, so a brushed satin grain that runs around the case, polish on the bevel of the case back, polish on the bevel that transitions to the hood. And then you'll note, and I'm going to try to get in a little bit closer to show this, but there is, let me see if I can get, increase the brightness maybe and you'll see it. There is a radial, here you can see it really well, there is a radial grain to the top of the case so it actually explodes outward like a sunburst dial. This is a loving tribute to the period that spawned the watch, the late 1960s, early 1970s. These imaginary origin sunray brushings were characteristic of timepieces produced during that era, including the original Seamaster Bullhead, and I'm delighted to see it make a return on this luxury re-edition. Lower the light for a moment because this watch is absolutely radiant to the point that it almost blinds me. Aperture closed down, you can see the features of the dial a little bit more clearly. The watch does feature a sapphire, but it is dramatically domed to look like the acrylic or plexiglass cover of the original, so you get some of that off axis distortion, the charm of the original watch. Now, there were three dials available black, metallic with perlage, and then this white 24 hour style dial. You have a mobile internal rotating bezel that's controlled by the crown at six o'clock. That crown does not screw down because it doesn't have any translational movement, so it can't compromise the watertight integrity of the case, which is 150 meters. It is a Seamaster after all. Now this is nice because you can use it to line up the calibrations against a reference point such as the minute hand or the hour hand to time something concurrent with the interval being monitored by the chronograph. Now the chronograph has a 30 minute register so you might want to use the track outboard to measure hours and the elapsed passage of hours if you're timing a sporting event longer than 30 minutes. Moreover the watch features blackened and loomed applied indices at the stations of the hours and matching blackened and loomed hands. There will be a loom shot at the conclusion of this video so stay tuned. I love the color and character of this watch. This watch is outgoing. This watch is a little bit extrovert this watch is way quirky. Everything you love about mechanical watches, everything you love about luxury watches, the, the sheer caprice of them, the absence of necessity, and the beauty, the joy, all of that is captured in this bullhead. Now the bullhead has a number of refinements over the original that go unseen. The date is a quick set, there is a hacking seconds function, and the screw down crown is part of the combination of features in conjunction with the screwed in case back that endow the watch with real world 150 meter water resistance. Now when you pull the crown out, you do hack the movement or stop the balance. You know constant seconds, halts, you can synchronize the watch precisely to a reference time. You also have a quick set function for the date, so you can rapidly cycle the date and correct it should the watch run down or encounter an irregular length month. What's inside the case is Omega's caliber 3113. Now it is based on the high horology Frédéric Piguet 1285, which is a thicker, more robust cousin of the high horology 1185. Omega makes some changes, increasing the power reserve from 40 hours to 52, converting the mobile stud index to free sprung for greater reliability and toughness, uh, adding the hacking seconds function whereas the original has none, and adapting it to Omega's proprietary coaxial escapement for greater long-term timing stability and short-term timing precision. It is a vertical clutch and column wheel chronograph. So, remember I mentioned that you can perhaps more easily use this watch as a handheld chronograph? Well, here's the proof in practice. Using your opposable thumb and the watch in the hand, it's quite simple to actuate the column wheel function selector, the column wheel making for a very crisp action, you feel it, you hear it, and the vertical clutch allowing you, if you prefer, to simply leave the chronograph running with no hazard or additional wear and tear to the movement. That's the advantage of a vertical clutch over a horizontal clutch. And once again, just an easier watch to operate in the hand, almost as though designed to be used as a handheld chronograph unless it's being worn. The ergonomic equation of this one is a little bit odd, but that makes it memorable. So many watches seem to be carbon copies of others, and so many vintage tribute watches seem to be unambitious Xeroxes of the originals. This watch both has its own colorful modern luxury watch character and a huge quirk factor that I find enormously endearing. This is one of the truly different modern Omegas, and whereas we make fun of Omega limited editions with 
series numbers of 1,970 pieces, 11,007 bond watches, 15,007 bond watches, 669 is downright limited by Omega standards. So this is a rare bird. Perhaps the first one of these I've seen since I started working in watches. You can see it and you can own it on our website. Omega Seamaster Bullhead Limited Edition. Well, it was never going to be quite as colorful and offbeat in the dark as it is in the day, but you can see that gorgeous and gentle blue glow. One feature I forgot to mention that I should about this coaxial chronometer chronograph is that it features a unique quarter turn crown. It locks and unlocks in one quarter turn, something I can't recall seeing on any other Omega product. You can see this watch by the light of day on our website.